Greetings, unsettled souls. Yes! Welcome to the correct view. <laughs> correct view. Sam I B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the media speaks. And uh, guys, we've got a, a remote show today. It was St. Patrick's Day, as you can tell by my extremely professional getup. And um, the fact that my mouse won't work. It is a, uh, it's a remote. We're doing it because uh, I posted a lot this week. I'm a DJ. Many of you know that. I just got off work and I uh, had a friend that I have not seen in quite some time invite me over. So I'm basically doing it from her residence, but that's the good thing about the internet. We're not doing this on an abacus. All right, friends. Uh, electron economic collapse. Michael Snyder. Uh, this is um, this is interesting. We are being killed on trade. Rapidly declining exports signal the death blow to the U.S. economy. Now, rather than look at me in this ridiculous head attire, I'm going to go ahead and hit screen share so that you guys can see this. The interesting aspect with this is that uh, four viewers already, welcome aboard, is that we have a number of issues where people are questioning whether or not Donald Trump is right or not. And I, I really, I mean, the wall is great. Uh, I can see they're probably going to knock it down out of pure spite. My issue, I could give a damn about the wall. The other things he's talking about is a lot more, uh, a lot more important to me. And uh, listen to this. Are we, he's saying that the way we are running our economy is going to bring us into a recession. Well, Michael Snyder can take or leave. The author of this article can kind of take or leave Trump. But he has uh, written something here that you need to hear. Exports fell precipitously during the last two recessions, and it is now happening again. Uh, how many of you know we had a recession in 08? Well, listen. How in the world can anyone take the claim that the U.S. economy is in good shape? On my website, he writes, I have been repeatedly pointing out the parallels between the last two major economic downturns and the current crisis, and I'm going to discuss another one here today. Since peaking in 2014, U.S. exports have been steadily declining, and this is something that we never see outside of, and you guessed it, a major recession. On the chart I have shared below, and you on screen share now are seeing it, um, the shaded gray bars represent the last two recessions, and you can see that exports of goods and services have dramatically plunged. Uh, the main thing I wanted to show you on this article is, in fact, that graph. I'm not going to stay on it for a long time. But um, this is uh, an interesting quote. The U.S. trade deficit widened more than expected in January as a strong dollar and weak global damage helped push exports to a five and a half year low. In other words, the very things that we were worried about are happening now. And I mean, I know a lot of you out there, I'm going to be crude for a minute. A lot of a lot of you guys think, oh, my God, we just had an uptick. So everything is tits. But it's not, okay? It really isn't. It's, uh, I, you're going to be crude to get somebody's attention, you know? So, I mean, it's not. Things are not going well. <coughs> you always have brief upticks during these kinds of things. And sometimes they go on for a minute. But I'm telling you, it really rubs me the wrong way. When people come out there and decide that because we have this brief uptick that suddenly now everything is going to be fine with the economy, that is not the case. And uh, Trump has pointed that out repeatedly to anybody that would listen. Um, this is Breitbart moving on. Migrant crisis, two-thirds of arrivals are basically illiterate. Now, here is the problem. Um, Christelle, am I any good at foreign languages? Uh-uh. No, absolutely not. And if I was to, uh, I love, I, I love, for instance, industrial music, and a lot of it is in Germany. If I was to move to Germany, do you realize I'd probably starve to death? Because the only thing I know how to order is eel soup, and I don't think I'd like it. Ich will auch Suppe, by the way. Um, the problem is you need to acclimate to the culture you're going to. <coughs> That doesn't mean you have to give up who you are. It doesn't mean you have to suddenly follow the religion of the country that you move to, whatever the highest percentage is. But you do have to make some kind of an effort. And no country can allow a large number of people who don't have basic 
survivor skills into the country all at one time. Not because we are closed minded and because we hate everybody. That is not the case. Rather, it's an issue of only being able to handle so much. If, if the neighbor down the street needs a sandwich, by all means, go to the grocery store and get them many sandwiches. But if the entire allotment that you live in is starving to death, all you're going to do is ruin your family if you try to help them all at one time. <clears throat> you know, going back to screen share here. Uh, thank you, Breitbart. Um, this is quite worrisome. A senior German academic has joined the chorus of voices expressing concern over how the educational standards of newly arriving migrants and the significant knockoff affects what is bound to have on the German educational system. President of the University of Hamburg and chairman of the German Educational Action Career Data Lesson, since we are on screen share, has pointed to the enormous cost of teaching hundreds of thousands of newcomers basic language skills, pointing to the particular uh, problem in the Syrian community. S listen to this. Now, this, this is a statistic that will stay in your head. In Germany, the university degrees go to about 15% of the people, and as a vast majority, the 85% are significantly worse. In other words, 15% of the migrants coming into the country have degrees, but 85% can't read at a first grade level. Now, let me ask you a question because Donald Trump asked this question and people called him racist. Uh, I will say he probably should work stuff better, so I'm going to attempt to do so. If you can't afford to take care of somebody and they are going to be absolutely destroyed. If you have migrants moving into the country that don't even know that it's not okay just to walk up and fondle somebody, like we saw in, uh, remember on New Year's Eve, it happened. If they can't even figure that out, if you can't figure out that you don't just walk to sit down beside somebody and start groping them, if you don't even know that, and you can't even read to understand the way the culture works, and you don't know any better. And then, I mean, at this point, you're bringing the destruction of your own country. I'm not saying that just let them starve to death, but you can't feed everyone. <coughs> All right, friends, this is from the hill. I'm saying this is a mouthful. Poll, only 15% say they have benefited from Obamacare. Now, those of you uh, watching, I'm going to go ahead and show you something. This right here, I'm going to flip you off so everybody gets to laugh. This right here, if you look, does not look like this. The reason for that is, uh, long-time listeners know, I cut the tip of my finger off on an aquarium that was broken, and I didn't realize that it was the way it was. And if you can imagine a peach, if you take a spoon and you scoop out the bottom of that peach and leave a little bit of the meat dangling, that's what the tip of this finger did. So I went to the hospital and they that first shot was pleasant. They shot it full of Novocaine and sewed it back together and it grew. Thankfully, I play keyboards. It hasn't affected anything because you pretty much use this part of your hand for keyboards, not here. If you play like that, you're not going to be able to hit anything. So I, it cost like a grand, but I was able to pay for it. I had vertigo and <clears throat> thankfully it never came back, but it cost about a grand to roll out. Thank God it wasn't so. They roll out brain tumors, strokes and MS and everything awful thing that will do it. I paid. I was able to do it. About two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I unfortunately lifted a table, kind of like toppled it over. And did the same thing here. You know why this looks worse? <clears throat> because I put a band-aid around it and hoped for the best. Uh, I couldn't play footsie and go to the freaking ER because I couldn't afford to do it anymore. I'd be in bankruptcy court. So I like stitched myself together as best I could. And Christelle thankfully doesn't get grossed out. I'm one of the people that Obamacare has utterly given the foot to. And I'm <laughs> telling you. It's, it's happening all over. Only 15% of America has benefited from Obamacare. Now, I know you're not going to believe me, so this is another great time to go to screen share. Um, I can figure out how my old computer works. Here we go. 
Just 15% of people, it says, say they have personally benefited from Obamacare, although more than one-third believe it has helped the people of their state, according to a poll released on Monday. <coughs> Pardon me, friends. Most Americans, a total of 56%, say that they haven't felt directly affected by Obamacare. Um, among those, it says, who have felt affected, more people say the law hurt them than help them, according to a polling by the National Public Radio. Now, NPR is left. I mean, left as in if it was any more left, it would be gone. That kind of left. Um, if you got any more left than NPR, you would be Soviet Russia. They are saying that Obamacare hurt you. And uh, I guarantee you listening to this, do me a favor, friends, leave a comment if Obamacare hosed you, because I'll tell you what. All right. Um, moving on to the last of the how Trump was right issues here. And again, I don't think he's like the perfect man. People are talking about him like he's the second coming of Christ. I don't believe that at all. I, I think he's wrong on Snowden. He's wrong on the Second Amendment. I think he's going to be less than easy on recreational drug users and nonviolent offenders. I worry about that a lot. However, he's right on trade, which we haven't seen in ages. He is right on keeping the jobs in the country and penalizing <clears throat> those that move. He's very right on the fact that the only war that he's willing to get us into at all is to defeat ISIS. And uh, many of you watching, uh, particularly my channel, are libertarian. Um, you shouldn't get involved in foreign affairs that don't affect you. ISIS is cutting off the heads of our citizens that work in other countries. That, to me, is a threat to us. Yes, I'm, I'm fine with you attacking ISIS. He doesn't want to get involved in anything else. He's right. He wants to get us out of other countries. Why are we protecting South Korea? Why are we protecting Israel? You got to protect Israel. You got to like the Jews. I do like the Jews. The Jews have a nuclear missile, so I'm pretty sure they can protect them themselves. Um, prison Planet, uh, Paul Joseph Watson. Hello, PJ Dub. Jean Claude Van Damme said uh, Rockefeller and Rothschild families won't let Trump win. It's like Godzilla going through Tokyo. Everybody at one time is bound and determined that he can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. And you know what? If enough people try to shoot him down, he's not going to be able to do it. He's trying to help us. He is trying to take a rather large bite out of the problems that we have, and people are fighting him every step of the way. Jean-Claude Van Damme sensationally told French political show that the Rockefeller and Rothschild families won't let Donald Trump win the presidency because he is an anti-globalist candidate. Well, that needs to be shouted from the rooftop, friends. They are doing their best to shove every candidate down our throat except Donald Trump, who we are choosing. And they did pretty much the same thing to Bernie Sanders. Let's face it. He got it jammed on his throat, too. It was in the super delicate system of the Democrats makes it so you might as well not even vote for one. Appearing on Le Grand Journal, the Belgian actor, it says, was keen to express that he was aware of who he was really shaping the U.S. presidential election race. Speaking about Ted Cruz and Donald Trump, Van Damme said, well, they are not going to win. You still have the Rockefeller people, like the Rothschilds, these big families that donate continents, excuse me, that dominate continents. These are families and the rise of 1827, a family with five sons that expands. It's above everything we're talking about tonight. You know what? He's right, unfortunately. He's absolutely right. They are doing everything they can to poison the run of uh, a very good man. Friends, I'm going to go to screen share here, and uh, i got a couple more stories to get to, but I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that this is brought to you by Sticker Junkie. As you can see on the screen here, I don't know why I'm pointing. StickerJunkie.com, and it's been around since 1999. Do you realize that the owner of Sticker Junkie was on Trump's The Apprentice? Do you realize that the owner of Sticker Junkie's brother, who is also a huge part of the company, is David Lake, <clears throat> um, co-host with Anne Marie and I. Anne Marie's done amazing, by the way, on the Media Speaks. We meet every Saturday at 2 p.m. We'll be on this Saturday at 2 p.m. And uh, 
I tell you what, man, Anne Marie has really given the show legs for sure. So make sure you uh, stop by, let her know how much you liked her. And when you go to stickerjunkie.com, I will tell you this you will get like a naked good deal by typing in the correct views or correct views on checkout. Sticker Junkie is giving a huge deal and a lot of money saved. It's like the ultimate model deal for you. Go Sticker Junkie and let them know you heard about it from the correct views. Friends, last of two stories here. Tech and government elite <clears throat> plot to take down Trump. I don't even know how else to say it, friends. He's like getting screwed here. I'm dead <laughs> serious. Kurt Nemo, tech and government elite meet. Plot to take down Trump. That's why you hit subscribe, because you never know what the hell I'm going to do. That's why you want to hit subscribe, because I'll probably do something worse tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> according to Apple Insider, technology leaders, including Apple CEO Tim Cook and government insiders, met over the weekend at the American Enterprise Institute annual world forum held at Sea Island, Georgia, to plot the downfall of popular Republican presidential candidate and frontrunner Donald Trump. It goes on that in addition to Cook, Google, she's like dying over the, the, the sex joke like five minutes ago. Christelle is losing it. That's great. In addition to Cook, Google co-founder Larry Page, Tesla and SpaceX chief Elon Musk, and Napster creator Sean Parker were in attendance at the Secret of Confab. So you've got all these people plotting against the man who has done way more good for this party than Mitt Romney or anybody else. And you bet your ass I name names. I, I, I name names. I let you know who's exactly doing it to him. And these are people that we're going to remember. Why? Because they're going to force somebody we don't want. And I've already said, I will now, now that Rand Paul is out, unless, say it with me, friends. Here we go. Hold, hold on, friends. Hold on. Unless Judge Napolitano, Justin Amish, or um, Walter E. Williams were to enter the Republican race. I will not vote GOP and Trump is not on the ticket. I refuse. And if Trump picks the wrong person as VP, I won't vote for him either. I'll go back to Gary Johnson. But the man is being cheated here, friends. Utterly cheated. And that brings us to the Dundee of the day. <laughs> Christina Sirich, is Monsanto seriously exempt from all liability lawsuits for PCB contamination? Now, the dummy of the day is here because there are so many people that just give Monsanto an absolute free pass. And they're being eaten alive by these things. And <clears throat> they don't care. Literally don't care. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, according to Lord Acton in 1887. Monsanto, it says, it has nothing to do with the clause that our corrupt Congress has passed in a piece of legislation, as a link to it, attempting the St. Louis, exempting the St. Louis-based company from all financial liability involved with lawsuits and financial settlements related to PCB contamination. Now, PCB... It's not as bad. Wow, I, I want to watch how I word this. In some ways, it is as bad as the disasters that we talk about with Fukushima, and we all know where that goes. No! They're going to be exempt from this in much the same way that they're trying to exempt Temco from uh, Fukushima here at 418. Just because Monsanto switched its focus from polluting the world with PCBs to polluting it with Roundup and Roundup ready crops. The megacorp just, it's crashing around you, is absolved from taking an ounce of responsibility. Monsanto already agreed to pay $700 million to the city in a city in Alabama to clean PCB contamination, but with the host of new cities suing for the same reason, did Monsanto just turn Congress onto a new level of corruption in order to protect itself from further <coughs> compatibility? This is a mess that you cannot even describe. It's it's more like the entire world is asleep. Yeah, this company can poison us. They can put bug spray into the DNA of our food. We don't care. It said the provision was slipped into another bill regarding chemical safety introduced last year by an unknown representative, and it doesn't name Monsanto specifically. 
So now they're trying to give companies just, you know, if you poison millions of people and it might put you out of business, well, we're going to go ahead and make you exempt from any kind of persecution. That way you won't be put out of business. That's the world that we live in today. And people wonder why. Why in the hell we're going to vote for Donald Trump? Um, let me tell you, why would you vote for anybody else? Before I'm signing off, do me a favor. Um, go to the correct views of hotmail.com. And if you want to donate to the show, every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. I'll let you know where to send any donations that you wish to give. And uh, remember, change transportation. If for any reason you need to get from point A to point B and don't have a ride, <clears throat> go on Facebook, look up change transportation. I used to say if you're in Ohio, I started if you were in Canton, then if you were in Ohio. He's got people in like 10 states now. So look up change transportation and don't be surprised if you get the best transportation deal you've ever had. Good night, friends. God bless and happy St. Patty's Day. Aaron Gabrak and all the good BS.